Hi, God bless, and welcome everyone here to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie with you all here in this day. As always, giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all the exaltation, because He alone deserves it all. In this day, I'm here to do one thing, and that is to speak the truth and nothing but the truth of the Word of God, giving Him thanks for everything that He's doing. I am reading from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. The word of God says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. In this day, the Lord has brought me back to the book of First Thessalonians chapter five once again. And as I begin to read it and study the verses, all I can really do was say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything you do and have done for us and continually do for us. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for bringing us hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you. I just had to thank God because when I read these verses and understood more in depth what Paul was speaking and writing to the church, it made more sense. Paul and his messages and as the messages I gave before the last two Mondays on First Thessalonians chapter 5 if you haven't heard them please go back and read them I uh, read them please go back and listen to them <laughs> and listen to every message that is played here on Talk Straight Bible because they're good these messages are really touching the heart of many people I get so many wonderful messages from so many friends and just believers who get on YouTube Facebook and they say that message from minister and pastor Jeremiah's Rafina, Jose, Gina, Debbie, it, it touched my heart. So God is doing wonderful things and we have to continue being that light that sheds hope in the midst of a hopeless world and people are just blessed so continue sharing the messages that are played here on talk straight bible because you are spreading the word of god you are spreading the good news and you are sharing what god is doing and most importantly you're spreading truth because that's what we like to do is speak the truth here and that's like my opening intro every morning is that I come here and I speak the truth and nothing but the truth of the word of God. Because I want to be a light like Paul describes here in these verses. I want to be a light so that others may see Christ in me. But Paul here in his message, he always had a mission. And I, I, I really love studying his life because he was a man who prosecuted people like you and me who love the Lord. But until he had his own encounter with the Lord, his own conversion where he was converted and he fell in love with Jesus Christ, he therefore understood the importance of giving encouragement to people like us, who, people who needed it, people who were hopeless, people who needed to hear that there is hope and to stay encouraged through difficult times. Paul begins here in verse 8 by calling believers those who are of the day. And that's beautiful when someone calls you a person of the day. This sounds a little bit odd, but the meaning of day is the time of light between one night and the next. And when you read in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and 4, it, God said, let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. God himself saw the light and God said, it's good, right? Because light has always been a symbol, symbol of God's holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, hope, and God's revelation. Everything that is of the light is good. And Jesus said in, in John chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I read a comment online. It was written by a commentator and he said, the light of Christ is the brightness of God shining on the retina of the human soul. Because the retina has such a huge responsibility. It senses light and sends signals to the brain so that you can see. If the retina becomes damaged, then 
it cannot regenerate, which means that it doesn't heal or it doesn't grow back. That's why it's important to stay connected to God. Because just like the the eye needs the retina, we need God. We have to stay connected to him. We need God in our lives in order for us to see what is good and what is evil. We need God just like the eye needs the retina. And without the retina, the eye cannot function. Without God, we cannot function. We need God daily. We need to remain planted and rooted in Jesus Christ, walking as a light in the midst of darkness. We are not of this world, so therefore we should not act or behave like the world. But we have to show others that Christ lives in us, that he is shining through us, that in the midst of a world that is feeling hopeless, there is hope. Because as Paul compares believers to being a light, he understood and we must understand that God who formed us, God who made us, we have been called to be a light in this world so that the light that is within us, it will not dim It cannot be turned off and it will not be hidden. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. Paul continues to say in the beginning verses of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 that we are to put on the breastplate of faith and love and as the helmet the hope of salvation. When you read Ephesians 6, where Paul wrote about the full armor, he spoke on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of the sandals of peace, the shield of faith, the sword, which is the word of God. He explained the importance of each piece of armor and why we are to wear it daily. And we are to know that this battle is not against flesh or blood, but it's against the spiritual things that we we don't even see there is a spiritual battle going on this battle we don't fight against each other but against principalities of darkness paul goes on to say that the breastplate of uh faith and hope and the helmet of salvation we need these things they're important because without these pieces of armor how are we going to protect our heads from the from um how are we going to protect our head if we don't have a helmet we need to protect our mind and the thoughts that come in if you go back and listen to some of the messages that pastor jeremiah gave on the mind they're tremendous messages that um he broke down every element and every part of the mind and how we get attacked and even gave his own testimony is beautiful we need this the breastplate of of righteousness but here he says we need the breastplate of faith and hope because we have to protect our hearts each day we face and we battle different types of situations we go through things daily and that's why Paul encourages the believers to always be dressed for spiritual battle because battles come in many forms but if we are walking in the light if we are of the light if we are a light in the midst of darkness there's hope not just for us, but those who are surrounding us. That's why I love Paul's message here in this book of Thessalonians, because Paul was encouraging the church, a church who was feeling hopeless, a church of people who were feeling like there's nothing for me. But he was reminding them that in God, there is hope. The people of Thessalonians, they were a church And a people who when they died and they were buried, they would put hopeless. There is no hope for this person. But we have to be reminded that when you are in Christ, there is hope in the midst of every storm you go through, every battle you face. There is hope. So don't feel hopeless in the times that we are living in. Don't feel hopeless in what you see, but be hopeful. 
because joy is coming. The Lord says that he's coming back for his people. He's just preparing a place for us. That is the hope that we receive. And every time the enemy comes at you and wants to throw a dart in your mind of negativity and oppress you, pray and put the helmet of salvation to protect your thoughts. Pray and put the breastplate of righteousness over your chest that God may cover your heart from every evil evil attack that the enemy throws your way. But in this day, I just wanted to leave you with this bit of a message that the Lord put in my heart. I say a bit, a bit of it, because I know I'm coming back <laughs> to give you some more. I just wanted to share with you what God has placed in my heart for this day. And always want to encourage you in the word of God, because there are encouragers out there. But there are those who want to encourage you in the word, just like Paul, a man who was faithful, loyal, and he was persistent in this calling. But most importantly, he spoke of our Lord and Savior. And he always, always greeted the people with peace and love and, and let them know that he was a man who was a bondservant to Christ. It's better to be a bondservant to the Lord than to be bound to this world. It's better to be a light in the midst of darkness, then be a person who is in the dark and has no light in them. So I pray you are blessed in this morning. Keep the faith, keep on pressing on, keep on seeking the Lord and know that God is with you every step of the way, but stay firm and stay faithful. And whenever you're feeling attacks coming your way, just know God is with you. May you be blessed. <laughs> May you continue walking by faith and not by sight and may you keep on being a light in the midst of darkness god bless you so we meet again amen shalom